Professor Chan, uh, Joseph, distinguished guests today, fellow students, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like, first of all, to thank the students of the Global Business Program for organizing this second Global Business Forum and for inviting me to speak on this year's theme, Innovation in a Turbulent Times. I'm happy to say also that my daughter is also a product of the Chinese University Business School. Presumably, <laughs> I have been invited here today to tell you all about how innovation can thrive or be employed in a constructive manner in turbulent times. I shall do my best, but you must, however, realize that I'm well known for my inclination towards conservatism. <laughs> <laughs> and by deduction, you can assume that my strong suit is not connected with the former. But I am familiar with the latter, having experienced those uh, unpleasant occurrences on numerous occasions in the past. So anyway, I'm happy to be here. What we have been facing in the past few years are indeed turbulent times. Turbulent for the countries and the economies, turbulent for traditional cultures and long-standing institutions, turbulent for everything large, small, and those in between. From bonds, property, oil, to cocoa, print media, and even universities, just to name a few beleaguer subjects, they are all facing turbulence in one way or another. But then, when have there been times when things were not a changing? To take a phrase from the classic Bob Dylan song, the times they are a changing, an anthem of change, if ever there was one. So I would suggest to you that turbulence is not something from which we should shirk, because it is the kind of recurring phenomenon that cannot be avoided, and because it may just be another word for opportunity, at least for those of us who are eager to seize the time, or more precisely, for those of us who are well prepared to seize the time. Allow me to seize this moment right now and give you a basic primer on where we are, where we expect to get to in this new year of the goat, and some people call it the year of the ram or the sheep. That all depends on the animal meanings. To be sure, 2015 will be another challenging year for the global economy, one likely to be characterized by uneven, anemic growth, as well as uncertainty, volatility, and turbulence. While the outlook of the US economy is somewhat more comforting, it has yet to generate strong demand for our exports. As for Europe and Japan, inflationary risk deflationary risk will add headwinds to the long overdue economic recovery. The mainland's economic growth is relatively stable, but faces downward pressure as well this year. The global economy as a whole is likely to remain on a slow growth path in the post-financial tsunami period that began in 2008. This along with a stronger US dollar will continue to put a drag on Hong Kong's trade performance. And it is important for us to note that our total trade is four times our GDP. The US Federal Reserve now is preparing to normalize interest rates, which runs counter to the further easing measures of Europe and Japan. The rise in US interest rates is certain. The question mark rests with the exact timing of implementation and the speed of the increase. This will have great significance for us because the Hong Kong dollar is linked to the US dollar. More importantly, the rise in interest rates will have a huge impact on the asset market, particularly our real estate sector. Europe and Japan, on the other hand, are facing the calamity of a deflationary cycle, something that they are not well equipped to deal with. The great economic powers going in opposite directions will further complicate the global picture. Moreover, the stance of the new Greek government on austerity measures and loan repayments 
as well as the heightened geopolitical tensions worldwide, terrorist attacks and counteractions in various corners of the world have added further uncertainty to the world market. The drop in international oil prices helps reduce production costs and stimulate consumption. It should reflect, it should benefit Hong Kong and other net energy importers. But excessive oil price volatility will pose threats to the economy of oil exporting countries that are overly dependent on oil income and undermine the stability of the global financial markets. Locally in Hong Kong, prolonged political bickering has been widening and deepening the divide in our community and disputes in the political arena are beginning to hurt our economic well-being and this is something of huge concern to me. It is against this turbulent background that I prepare my eighth budget, which I deliver on Wednesday past. Apart from introducing expansionary fiscal measures to stimulate domestic consumption, to stabilize our economy and preserve employment, I also outline in the budget my thoughts on the development of our economy. My mission as financial secretary is chiefly to maintain a favorable business environment, promote sustainable economic development, make available diverse and quality jobs for our working population, thereby enabling Hong Kong people to lead better and more fulfilling lives. The future economic success of Hong Kong depends on the innovative and creative powers of individual Hong Kong people today. If we can help enable more Hong Kong people, especially our young people, to follow their dreams and to do their best, the self-motivated drive will unleash their innovative and creative powers, elevating and diversifying our economy as a result. So you must all be thinking at this stage of life about your future careers and the dreams that you will follow. No doubt some of you <coughs> will even be considering your own startups. Hong Kong long a cradle for entrepreneurs, and we do have many legendary tales to tell on this score, certainly encourages business innovation. More than welcoming and encouraging startups, we actually need them. We also need you, your creative thinking, as well as your drive. If you should have any such inkling, push forward, I recommend, and make the best of your effort. My only advice is this. No matter what you intend to do, be well prepared. Be prepared to commit your whole self, be prepared for the unexpected, and most of all, be prepared for failure. Having a successful business and doing what you love is not going to be an easy endeavor, but the mere process of moving forward and struggling towards your own little utopia will be rewarding and satisfying but the ultimate condition for success, again, is that you must be well prepared. Running one's own business is not, of course, the only option. How about working or actually setting up a social enterprise which balances economic and social values, which makes profit while helping others, which are socially meaningful? I'm not saying that setting up a social enterprise is an easier option as compared with a commercial startup but I do believe that a successful social enterprise has added values. It can be a disruptive innovator that squeezes the market of traditional enterprises. And a strong social enterprise sector, which accepts a lower rate of shareholders' return and a higher rate of social responsibility, can be a partial solution to the wealth concentration problem that we have in Hong Kong. Diverse and dynamic, Hong Kong also boasts a melting pot of cultures with a blooming talent pool in the cultural and creative sectors. We wish to create an atmosphere that inspires creativity, in which our fashion designers, our film directors, artists, musicians, and performers can turn their creativity into personal fulfillment as well as economic vitality. My budget this year highlights some of the government initiatives in the area that I have just mentioned. I hope with persistent efforts along this direction, we can enable our young people, including many of you here this morning, 
to fully actualize yourself in the Maslow fashion and at the same time diversify our economy. Some of you may have heard of Louis Latham. For nearly 30 years, he was the editor of Harper's. More recently, he founded the Latham Quarterly. I like what Mr. Latham had to say to a student audience at St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland. His words were spoken a decade ago, but they are no less meaningful and no less moving today. Quote, when I was your age, Latham told his young audience, I made the mistake of imagining the future as a destination, like Paris or Baltimore or the Gobi Desert. Instead, he said, <clears throat> the future can turns out to be something that you make instead of find. It isn't waiting for your arrival, either with an arrest warrant or a ban, nor is it any further away than the next sentence, the next best guess. The future is an empty canvas or a blank sheet of paper. And if you have the courage of your own thought and your own observation, you can make of it what you will. So I shall be looking forward to what you will make of your future. So too will Hong Kong. The shape that your decisions will make will certainly mold the ultimate des the destiny of Hong Kong. And finally, if you don't mind, allow me to end my speech by quoting myself. And I hope that's not too long. I would like to repeat the last three paragraphs of the concluding remarks of my budget, which I'm sure you're all aware. That was delivered in Cantonese last Wednesday. And the following is the broadly translated version that I've done myself in English. Quote, <clears throat> Abraham Maslow once said, and I quote, for our chronically an extremely hungry man, utopia can be defined very simply as a place where there is plenty of food. Freedom, love, respect may all be waved aside as strippers, which are useless since they fail to fill the stomach, unquote. Having developed for more than a century, Hong Kong ranks in the top tier globally for its economic success. However, Behind and beyond material fulfillment, the people of this city, our younger generations in particular, are hungering for spiritual contentment. This is what a mature society should manifest, and this is a change that needs to be addressed and dealt with. Nonetheless, conflicts should be resolved through conversation rather than confrontation, and this is a point that we all must come to terms with. As the saying goes, Walnuts and pears you plant for your heirs. The Hong Kong we see today is the result of the exertion of past generations who brought forth good food for us to try and thrive on. As for the future, much of the honors will rest with our younger generations today who will not just enjoy the good food, but will work hard for tomorrow's harvest. I hope that they will continue to sow the seeds, plow the land, and plant the trees so their future generations can enjoy the fruits of their labor. Our vision is to make this city a better place with a brighter future for everyone where our legend lives on." Unquote. And I wish to add today that if for any reason the younger generation should forget to sow the seeds, plow the land, and plant the trees, their future generations will risk becoming hungry and perhaps angry men and women who will play this barren land of ours. So thank you once again for this opportunity. Have a great day.